Let's continue our discussions about energy by learning about specific heat. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How is energy transfer affected by the specific heat of substances? Specific heat capacity is designated with the letter C and is the amount of heat energy that is required to raise one gram of substance by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. Celsius and Kelvin both raise and lower at the same rates, even though they're on different scales. Specific heat capacity is measured in joules per gram Kelvin or joules per gram Celsius. Substances have standard specific heats. Take a look at this table here, and we would often see these specific heats for each substance. But what exactly does it mean when we're talking about specific heat and how does it apply? Let me give you some applications of specific heat. One application is in baking. If you've ever baked cookies before, you know that you put cookies on an aluminum cookie sheet. Now, aluminum itself has a specific heat of nine joules per gram Kelvin. And when you pull that aluminum out, that aluminum pan out of the oven, you typically use cotton pads that have a specific heat of 1.3 joules per gram Kelvin. Well, hot pads have a higher specific heat capacity. That means they're able to limit energy flow to your hands. It takes a lot more energy to cause the temperature of those cotton hot pads to change their degrees by one degree Celsius. Aluminum, on the other hand, has a lower specific heat, which is good. We want a lower specific heat because we want energy to be able to go from the aluminum into the cookies to bake them. Another application of specific heat is climate. If you've ever been on a coastal climate city like Florida or California, you probably know that those coastal areas have temperatures that are really awesome. Typically, go they, and, and it lasts year round and people go to the beach, it's really nice climates, things like that. Well, water or the ocean itself has a very important role at that, specifically the specific heat of water. Now, salt water has a specific heat of 3.85 joules per gram Kelvin. And that means that those large bodies of water help regulate regulate coastal climates. It takes a lot of heat energy to change the temperature of water, one gram of the temperature of water, by one degree Kelvin or Celsius. This is the specific heat equation. Here on the far left, we see specific heat designated by the lowercase c, measured in joules per gram Kelvin or joules per gram Celsius. Q here is enthalpy. It's the energy gained or released by the substance, and that's a measurement in joules. M is mass, measured in grams. And the change in temperature is you typically take the final temperature minus the initial temperature, and it can either be in Kelvin or Celsius because they both go at the same rates. Now, one other way to look at this formula is Q equals MC delta T. In fact, you might see the specific heat equation listed in this arrangement because it's more of a linear arrangement. This way we're solving for the energy gained or released, and we'll use this equation later when we talk about calorimetry at a different slide. But we've rearranged it this way to solve for specific heat because that's what we're learning in this module. In fact, let's go ahead and go through an example right now. Here it says to determine the specific heat of a material if 35 grams of a sample absorbed 628 joules as it was heated from 293 Kelvin to 313 Kelvin. Well, quite easily, we just need to figure out what each of the pieces of this equation are. Let's start with what the question is. We're trying to find the specific heat. So we're looking for C. We see 35 grams here. We need to know that grams is a measurement of mass. It says the sample absorbs 628 joules. Joules is, an, is a measurement of energy, and it's absorbing that energy, so this is a Q. And it was heated from 293 kelvins to 313 kelvin. That's a change in temperature designated by this tiny little delta, or the triangle represents a change in temperature. Now, if we plug these things into our equation exactly where they go, we can eventually simplify and solve for our specific heat. So this substance has a specific heat of 0.897, which is around the specific heat of aluminum. So this is probably aluminum. That leads us to the end of our notes. This is a good time to review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and then summarize and answer that essential question. Good luck.